Hello folks and welcome to a brand new Unity tutorial. In today's tutorial we are going to be looking at a very basic day and night cycle. So simple it takes literally three or four lines of code. So as you can see before us we have a scene set up. It's got a few objects on it. I've used the gold colour because gold is nice and it reflects the sun rather well. Uh, as you can see on our game screen we've got the sun just over in that distance at the moment reflecting on the sphere and the shadows are cast that way. So the beauty of this is when the sun moves, if we go to the directional lighting, when the sun moves on the x-axis, as you can see, if we just move that around, just keep rotating it, the sun, basically all we're gonna do is get the sun, or the directional light called the sun, to move on its x-axis. Very, very straightforward stuff and really quite rewarding as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a script. So if you haven't got one already, you need to create a folder called scripts. So you right click in the asset window there, go up to create, select folder and rename it scripts. I've already got a scripts folder on this one here, so I'm just going to go straight into that. And what you need to do then is right click in your scripts folder and surprise, surprise, we are going to create a brand new C Sharp script. And I'm just going to call this day and night. Nothing too complicated there. You can call it whatever you want, though, as long as you remember what you've called it. I'm going to double click on there to open up Visual Studio. And then we're going to start by typing some code. Once Visual Studio loads, there we go. We're not going to need the start method, so we're going to get rid of that. We will need the update method. And we will need another method as well, which we're going to call void sun rotate. Open close brackets. And there we go, that's ready. And we're going to call that sun update, sun rotate method in the update method. So we're going to type there sun rotate, open close brackets, semicolon. And what that means is that every time this update runs it will then jump to the sun rotate and do it there we could write the entire code for the rotation of the sun in here but when you create the game the update method gets very very full so what I like to do is I like to have the, the methods for each individual item separated so the update will run it'll run the sun, sun rotate method which is down here and this is where our line of code will go we need to declare a variable first of all as well though, so we need to know what speed we want the sun to rotate around. And we could set a single speed, we can set it 20 or 50 or whatever we want to do, but I think we'll add a bit of variation here and we can play around with it and find the, the best speed for our particular sun. So we're going to use something called a range here. So we're going to open the square brackets and type range. In the middle of that, after that we're going to go open the regular bracket or parentheses as they're called I believe uh, and we'll choose a range between 20 and it'll be a float so 20f and then comma 200 let's say 200f there we go okay so we've got a range of 20 to 200 and then what we need to do is assign the actual variable for this range and we're going to call it orbit speed Okay, so that's all we need to do with declaring that. Now if we save and exit that, that's going to do nothing at all at the moment because we haven't actually told the sun rotate method to actually do anything. And that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to start by transform, or transform, transform dot rotate around, open bracket, vector 3.0, vector 3 dot right and then we're going to put in our orbit speed and we're going to times that by time dot delta time and then we're going to do a semicolon transform and put transform there we go little error there there we go so transform dot rotate around open brackets vector 3 dot zero comma Vector three dot right comma orbit speed dot time dot delta time. Okay, and then what we'll do under here, we will type in transform. I can't spell transform today. 
look at, and we're just going to do vector three dot zero, and that is our script. And we can Control and S that to save it, and we'll go back into our Unity window there. And it's going to compile that script, and hopefully there'll be no errors. I don't think there is. Just get rid of those little warnings on there. And then what we need to do is attach this script to our directional light. So we click on the directional light. We are going to drag the day and night script over to there. There's another way of doing that. If we don't want to drag it, if that folder's not open, I'll show you what else we can do. We can remove that component there. We click add a component, and then we can just type day and night, and it will locate the day and night script as well. Okay. Now when we typed in range, what that actually gave us, our orbit speed has now got this attached to it. Instead of just having a single number, we've now got this range, and it goes from 20 to 200. And with this, we can change it to what we think is the best setting for our... Some games like to have a really slow day and night cycle, which is great. You get a good atmosphere in the day and a good atmosphere in the night. Some, you know, they want to skip through and, and make it really, really quick. It's, it's entirely up to you. It's whatever game you're creating. We're going to add a bit of colour, I think, to the sun to give it a bit of a... Let's glow there. Let's make it a bit orangey. Okay. And we'll leave everything else as normal. The strength on here as well, just so this is about the shadows. So we've got we can turn the shadows off, but that's kind of pointless if we're trying to create a day and night cycle which shows us the long shadows. We can have hard shadows or we can have soft shadows. If you wish as well, if you think the shadows are a bit too dark, you can actually train change the strength of them by just dragging this down here. You can have zero there, or you can have just a very light shadow. It's entirely up to you what you prefer. Somewhere kind of like 0 0.6 is quite a nice one, I prefer anyway. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to click on play. Uh, we'll go to full screen so we can see the full benefit of it. Let's click on play. And this is set to 20, I think I did at the moment, didn't I? So there we go, there's the sun orbiting round our little world. And as you see, the shadow, the reflection there of the sun coming up as it comes up, it's going to create the long, long shadows again. And the shadows disappear as the sun goes over the shadows then are cast on the other side there we go let's just come out of that second let's keep it on here and let's see what we can do if we click play again we can now change this orbit speed mid run time so it's 20 at the moment let's whack it right up to 200 and there we go warm doesn't time fly when you're having fun but yeah that would be a little excessive for a game wouldn't it but the beauty of this it gives you a bit of a and then once you've got a speed you want, if you wanted to, you can go back into the code if you want and change it to, say, just a general float where it's set to orbit speed is 32, if that's what you want to do. Or you can just leave it like that and let it run at that speed at all. You can also manipulate the code uh, if you wanted to, so you can have the code change the orbit speed at certain times. So if when the sun drops down below the horizon you wanted night to go really fast, when it gets there, you can then whiz it round, and then the code will then change it back to its regular speed during the day. I can't do it during runtime because it's a bit quick, but you can you get the idea. You can have the code change this at runtime as well. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you might want night time to go a lot quicker than daytime. It, you know, again, it's your game. You design it how you want to. What we can also do uh, is we can add a little bit of fog to make it a bit foggier as well. So if we go to our lighting tab over here, now if you haven't got your lighting tab, it's quite simple. You go to Window, go over to uh, Rendering, and you've got your lighting tab there. But click on that, and it will appear somewhere, and you can just drag it to wherever you want your lighting tab to be. I like it fixed up here next to the inspector, so you can just flick between the two. So to add our fog, we go into our lighting tab, we click on Environment, and we'll click on Fog. And I've already created the bit here, so I've changed it to linear, and I've made it start, naught, and end 15. You can change that according to however you want it. I mean, it's not, you know, I like to have it naught, and then 50, because it gives you a nice bit of a haze right in front of you. And then again, we click play again, and the sun will move around. Again, I think we've set it to a slow speed. 
Dialogue is quite nice, and that's without any post processing on as well. So that looks really cool. And there we go. That is how to do a very basic day and night cycle. Hope you enjoyed that. But if you did, don't forget subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tutorials and more content on my channel as well. And also, don't forget smash that like button if you've enjoyed what you've seen today. It really, really helps my channel grow. In the meantime, thank you ever so much for watching. Bye for now.